Hi everyone, our hope for today comes from Psalm 119, verses 97 and 98. This is what it says. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. When we think of verses from the Bible that stand out to us, you probably have your one or two or more that you go to regularly. Today happened to be a strange day in which two of my favorite verses, I got to read both of them. In Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6, I read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will set your paths straight. I also got to read in John 13 verses 34 and 35, Jesus looking at his disciples and saying, A new command I have for you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all people will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. I was talking with the youth guys, Kyle and Gabe, and they were talking about Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. What's amazing, though, is the psalmist here doesn't have the whole Bible the way we have it. He doesn't even have all of the Old Testament. He just has the first five books of the Bible, often called the Torah or the law. And if you're like me, you go back to Genesis and you say, I'm going to read through the whole Bible at once. And you get through Genesis because it's great and there's these amazing stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and you just get immersed in what's taking place. The first 12 chapters of Exodus, just as great. The Israelites in Egypt and they're planning their escape to get away and everything God is doing to make that happen. And then you kind of trudge through the rest of Exodus, and by the beginning of Leviticus, you think, that's it. That's enough. But what's amazing here is the psalmist is saying, oh, how I love your law. And like us, he loves those stories from Genesis and Exodus. But rather than getting bogged down in Leviticus, he thinks to himself, there's something beautiful about the holiness that they're asking us for. When he gets to Numbers, he thinks, these are my people moving towards the promised land. And when he gets to Deuteronomy, he's thinking, oh, wow, these sermons that Moses preaches, they are absolutely incredible. You know, we have so much information coming at us at light speed. Sometimes we need to remember that God's word is the truth. And this is the truth that will set us free. And whether we're reading from the Torah or from the rest of the Old Testament or the New Testament, I invite you to slow down, to meditate on God's word, and to be amazed by what it says. If you don't even know where to start, a few ideas for you. One, why not just pick up the Proverbs and read one chapter of Proverbs each day? There's 31 Proverbs, often 31 days in a month. Easy to make it happen. We also have sermon-based readings online that you can follow along with. Or if you'd like, you can even email me directly at dschmidt at erbc.ca. I would love to talk to you about that. And another reminder, Psalm 119, 97 and 98. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. God bless everybody.